go ahead and get started with today's webinar. So today we're going to be talking about Supply Pike's OTIF radar application and some best practices for using the application. We'll go through a live training demo of OTIF radar and of course answer any questions that you have. Um, before we get started though, I'd like to introduce you to the team that will be hosting the webinar today. Um, so my name is Krista. I'm the VP of Customer Success here at Supply Pike. I have been with Supply Pike for almost five years now, and I have with me Ryan Petty. And Ryan, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Ryan Petty, Senior Product Manager for Supply Pike, and I've been here a little over six years working with uh, suppliers on transportation, compliance, deductions, and all of those things. So excited to talk. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. So let's take a quick look at the agenda for the webinar today. Um, so started off with an introduction. Um, we're going to dive right into some key facts for disputing OTIF fines. Um, so we'll go through kind of a slide deck presentation on some of those key facts. And then after that, we're going to jump right into a live training demo of our OTIF radar application. Um, we will have some time towards the end of the webinar today to go through any questions that you have or any discussion topics you'd like to review. Um, but we'll also try to answer your questions just kind of throughout the webinar and throughout the training session. So uh, please feel free to utilize the Q&A box that you will see at the bottom of your Zoom window to submit your questions throughout today's webinar. And uh, we will either answer those live uh, with the help from Ryan, or we will um, chat with you on those questions using the Q&A box as well. Um, so the next slide is just a couple housekeeping things, um, some common questions that we get in our webinars. So you will get a copy of this slide deck that we are presenting today, along with a recording of today's webinar. Um, so for those um, that want to share it with additional members of your team, or um, if you have to hop off, hop off a little early, we'll um, send you the recording in full, uh, probably about three to four business days after um, this webinar is complete today. Um, and again, just to kind of review questions, go in the Q&A box at the bottom of Zoom, and you can submit those throughout the webinar. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna turn it over to Ryan to kick us off with some key facts for disputing OTIF fines. Yeah, all right, let's dive right in. Um, so first of all, we're gonna uh, talk about, you know, just OTIF fines and how they kind of relate to other types of chargebacks that Walmart uh, likes to throw at you from every angle. Um, so, just some differences to understand and get a baseline here. Uh, when we talk about deductions, uh, which our deductions navigator solution can help you with, those are, are really referring to accounts payable deductions from Walmart where they are going to pay one of your invoices and they find something wrong with the quantity received or the price that was billed, something like that. Um, so that accounts payable team is deducting off that uh, payment of your invoice. Um, so that those are deductions. They can be disputed. Uh, that is through the accounts payable dispute portal in Retail Link or APDP, um, another fun acronym uh, from Walmart. So that is kind of these deductions. And there's a lot of shortage deductions or the most common types, but there are a lot of different deduction types. OTIF fines, on the other hand, are billed from Walmart to you. Uh, so they are sort of more from the account receivable side of Walmart because they're trying to collect these fees. And typically, they are going to subtract these fees off of future payments, um, but they are sort of singular, big, monthly fine invoices from Walmart. Um, and they are separate from shortage deductions. So, you know, they're those two types of fines, even though there can be some similar sort of overlap in the maybe the root cause of the charge type. Um, you can get a shortage deduction. You can also get a not in full OTIF fine for the same PO, but they are basically separate chargebacks. And um, if you dispute one, it's not going to impact the outcome of the other, for example. So 
Um, and as far as disputing goes, we're going to go over some recent changes from Walmart on how to dispute OTIF charges. Historically, there's not been an official process. This is what has changed in the last six months. Um, and now there is a more formal process. But historically, you were sort of on your own to try to get OTIF fines waived or reversed. Um, and the only real success was happening typically by going through your buyer and trying to kind of plead your case via email or other communication. Um, so now you can actually dispute in high radius portal uh, or with your buyer is still potentially an option um, unless your buyer is telling you now you need to use high radius. But we'll, we'll dig a little bit more into that in the coming slides. Um, so lastly, SQEP, uh, the new fund compliance program from Walmart. Um, this is more similar to OTIF, but it is still separate. So uh, you still get a monthly fine for SQEP issues. Um, they are compliance related fines. So um, it's measuring your performance to do all of these different requirements along that supply chain and fulfillment process. But it is, in theory, mostly measuring you against new uh, defect types, as they call it. So it doesn't necessarily, it's not finding you twice for the exact same thing, although sometimes similar root causes can cause fines in multiple of these categories. So um, that's kind of what that third bullet point talks about. Of so They can kind of stack up these different charge types. Um, a similar, another similarity to OTIF and SQP is that they are also all disputed in high radius. So that's uh, where you would go to dispute any SQEP fines. So hopefully that gives a good baseline here. Let us know if you have any questions on that. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, OTIF fine disputing, this process has changed. Um, for the first time, Walmart has kind of formally shown a dispute process to OTIF charges. So back in late January, almost February, uh, they sort of silently published an update to their OTIF FAQ and just added a little simple question of, are OTIF charges disputable? And um, they referred to this process that you see on the slide to file a dispute, please use high radius. Um, and so now there is a formal process for anyone on the call is not familiar. High radius, you can see the sort of website uh, link to it there on the slide. Um, but that is a portal hosted by Walmart that you should have free access to. And you can review uh, your invoices from Walmart, anything, any kind of charges or fines that they posted, including SQEP and OTIF. Uh, you can see those charges and then you can dispute them in, within that portal. So um, that's what High Radius is, has its own separate login from retail link. So you have to kind of go directly to that site to access it. Um, so, in terms of dispute methods, we talked about historically going through your buyer was really the only option. Um, now there is this new high radius option. So you can certainly dispute in high radius. And if you do so, uh, the only time you can actually dispute is after the invoice is posted because high radius is not going to have an OTIF fine until it has actually been issued by Walmart. And usually that's about four weeks after a month ends. So um, the next sort of OTIF invoice will be September, posted sometime in late October. Um, so you can dispute up to 13 months back in a high radius. So you have, you know, sort of that's the time frame that you can dispute. Um, so basically the last 13 months of invoices. Um, so that's high radius. If you want to dispute with your buyer, historically what we've said is try to go to your buyer before the fine is issued. And some buyers are willing to help you waive fines if you give them a good reason to do so. Um, and they actually push for that waiving of the fine before the fine is issued. And that's where we saw the most success at disputing with your buyer because 
once it was issued, it seemed to be a lot harder for the buyer to help you uh, sort of waive that or reverse or waive that fine. Um, so, so now you can do either. I generally tell our customers that, um, you know, if you've had success going to your buyer in the past, then by all means, continue what works. Don't break it if it's not, or don't fix it if it's not broken. Um, but if you get any kind of pushback from your buyer suggesting you dispute in high radius, or if they're kind of non-responsive uh, to your request to get fines waived, then you're probably you know, going to need to try and dispute in high radius. Um, and that's what we've built into Supply Bike that we'll be going over today that we can kind of help you streamline that process. So a lot of information there. Um, this has all kind of changed in the last six months. So definitely let us know what questions you have. Um, so you might be wondering, what do you need to include on a high radius dispute? And this is one of the things that we had to kind of do a lot of experimental trial and error. Uh, submitting lots of disputes with lots of suppliers to understand what high radius is looking for. And they don't spell this out in that OTIF FAQ document. They don't tell you exactly what columns they're looking for. You just have to keep trying until you learn what is necessary. So we tried to collect that information and present it here. Um, so a lot of this is kind of some basic information you would recognize your six digit vendor number, uh, the, the, of course, the PO numbers you're disputing, they want you to include item numbers, um, if, especially if you're disputing in full charges, or you're disputing maybe particular PO lines, uh, they want those item numbers, the charge type, basically what, which metric you're disputing, of course, what was the charge, uh, MABD information, if you're disputing something like collect ready, then they want the non-compliant case columns that are related to collect ready, such as late routing and supplier ship point. Uh, if it's on time, they want the delivery window column. And then they also want kind of PO change or cancel reason code columns. Um, and generally all of that should be in the OTIF scorecard app and retail link. Um, but it is kind of a pain to make sure you have all those columns ready. And that's part of what SpyPipe can help you generate uh, without having to do all that manually. Um, so last note, uh, just again to, to reiterate, it is possible to basically get charges for these same orders across those different fine or charge types, um, deductions, OTIF, SQEP, um, and so if you successfully dispute, say, a shortage deduction in APDP, that's not going to necessarily reverse an OTIF charge uh, related to that PO. So just want to make that clear that all these chargebacks and related disputes are all, unfortunately, separate in Walmart's eyes. And so... Um, so we try to help you with charges across these different categories, and that's what we'll be diving into with OTIF today. So without further ado, we can dive into the app and show you what we've been working on. My keyboard to work, there we go, okay. So um, we're going to be going over a few different features in the app today. Certainly not all the features that OTIF Radar offers, but we want to key in on sort of this whole disputing process. And what I would recommend starting with is um, invalid fines. So this is something that Supply Pike tries to identify for you is what are your invalid fines based on the data? So Supply Bike identifies a few different scenarios that we consider the fine to be uh, potentially invalid based on the data. Um, and there's one scenario per metric that we have, um, and I'll kind of describe what that what those scenarios are, um, but. For example, on the in full metric, uh, if you're getting kind of fill rate fines, in full charges, something that we pretty commonly see is that 
um, according to your ASNs, those advanced shipping notices where you're telling Walmart, this is how many cases I've shipped, uh, we compare those shipped quantities that came from your warehouse that says this is how much we shipped, we compare that to what gets received or marked as received in OTIF with Walmart. And if there is a discrepancy where you've said you ship the cases, but Walmart is saying they did not receive them and they are actually fining you for those cases that you say you shipped, then that is one of those scenarios that we identify as a potentially invalid fine based on that shipping to receiving discrepancy. Um, so that is what I've got highlighted here on the dashboard. And this is one place you can kind of start if you wanted to in terms of looking for your invalid fines with OTIF radar. Um, of course, you can see historical fines in sort of overall fines month by month. You can click on these months to kind of update the date range. Um, I've got July selected right now. And so I can see the fines for July about $3,400, and then about $800 came from these cases that were shipped according to the ASN, but not received by Walmart. So you could, you know, very quickly, of course, uh, kind of scan through different months to see what, how much that discrepancy is. You can see this one is a much higher percentage. Uh, so this will vary, of course, Walmart, you know, as terms of reasons why we see this, sometimes Walmart miscounts, sometimes cases get lost at center point, sent to the wrong DCs, um, you know, all kinds of possibilities of why Walmart miscounts. Um, and so that's what we're trying to highlight, regardless of why they miscounted, uh, we want to highlight that there was a potential miscount so that you can dispute that. So. Um, once you've identified the invalid fine, and I'm talking here about in full, but this could also exist for, say, collect ready. Um, so in this case, for June collect ready, there was an actual fine, but we did not identify any invalid fines on collect ready for this particular month. So you can quickly see kind of what is your opportunity to dispute um, if there is one that Supply Pike identified. So let's dive into kind of the next step of that workflow of what I would do. So if you're if you want to dispute this uh, this invalid fine, all you have to do is click on this shipped not received invalid fine amount, and that will basically filter and load all of your purchase orders that fit that scenario of having a discrepancy between shipped and received cases. So. Uh, out of all the non-compliant POs and lines, how many of those and which ones of those uh, were invalid? And that's what, uh, that's what we're highlighting here. So 95 POs where there is this discrepancy. And uh, one thing that you'll note when you load the orders page in OTIF Radar, if you have previously disputed this month and this metric, we will show that up top. So we'll show the total charge for this month for this metric. We'll show if any disputes have been submitted and what the status of that dispute was. Um, you can also even click on the sort of view the latest dispute and it'll go to the details of that dispute. So. This is just a quick reminder as you're going through these orders, if you want to dispute, this is a quick status check to, you know, have I disputed this month or not? Uh, you can kind of quickly tell from this information here. Yeah, and Ryan, we have a couple of questions coming through kind of along this line. Um, do we plan to add an enhancement or any feature in the future that will allow the user to either like view multiple months in one or download multiple months of OTIF data? Yeah, so that's actually something we are uh, testing out right now. Um, to allow multiple months being selected. So definitely something that's been on our minds of trying to give you a, a longer picture of, of sort of data uh, and performance. So that is, 
it is very much uh, on our minds and we are testing uh, a change right now. We want to make sure that even if we're loading six months of data or 12 months of data, that uh, kind of the app still is responsive and fast enough for you to, you know, still effectively use it. So that's the biggest change that we're trying to make sure that our uh, it's still performing well when we're loading, you know, that many months of data. Um, but yes, that is that is something we're looking at doing. Um, and in terms of disputing, just a quick note uh, that I don't think I mentioned earlier, but the way that you dispute these OTIF charges is always per month. So um, you you know, there's one dispute per month essentially. Um, and so maybe someday we'll have a, a feature where you can dispute multiple months at once, but at the least you can kind of bulk dispute a number of all the orders you want within a particular month. Um, so at most you have to submit, you know, one dispute per month. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks, Ryan. Um, and one more question before we move on. So for clarification, um, you're saying that suppliers can get a shortage on one end and then also get a not in full fine for the same PO. Is that correct? That, that is correct. Yeah. Um, and it's different teams assessing those charges. You know, it's Walmart's accounts payable team that's looking at your invoice and deciding whether to pay it in full. Um, and so that's where that deduction would happen is at that time of, of payment on your invoice. But then, you know, OTIF is its own separate program, and they're measuring out of all the cases that were ordered, how many did Walmart actually receive? And if there's a short, if they see, you know, um, not all the cases ordered were received, then that they assess that not in full charge, and you get a fine of 3% of what Walmart would have paid you for those goods. So, um, yeah, they can absolutely stack like that. Yeah, great. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, not so great um, for all the suppliers out there, but uh, sure, yeah, sure. It can happen. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, on this orders page, so it kind of talked about you can quickly see, you know, have I disputed this month or not? What is the status of that last dispute? How much got approved, et cetera? Um, so let's say, you know, we want to move uh, to a different month. So just keep in mind that you can always kind of move through the, the months as you're looking at these purchase orders and uh, we'll, we'll show you those orders that are potentially invalid. So now we're looking at July, we can see a different dispute status for this month. Um, so the whenever you have the month that you want to dispute selected, um, then what all you have to do is select the POs that you want to dispute. And in this case, because we clicked that invalid fine amount, um, we're only showing you invalid POs. So POs with invalid charges. So 99% of the time, all you're going to do is select all the POs with this top left checkbox, click on dispute POs, and here we will kind of summarize the dispute and also start to fill out the dispute form that will be submitted to High Radius. And we automatically fill in all the details uh, that we can. So we'll autofill the dispute amount based on the POs you've selected. Uh, High Radius has you fill in this like drop down selection of dispute reason and they only want you to select incorrect billing, um, regardless of why you're disputing these OTIF charges, this is what they want you to select. So it's sort of auto filled out for you. And then there is this general comment area where you can type in, you know, reasoning for your dispute. And if you are disputing one of these invalid charge scenarios that Supply Pike has identified, we'll auto fill this with our suggested text to include. So in this case, you know, these items were shipped uh, to the Walmart DC, but we were still charged in full charges and then see attachment for the lines that were incorrectly charged. So that's our suggested language, but you can always override this 
um, and type in, you know, whatever uh, comments you want to sort of back up your dispute reason. So, um, so you can fill that out or you can take our suggestion and submit. The last thing that you would need to, you know, attach on any high radius dispute is any documents that you want to attach to sort of back up your dispute. And this is where, again, Supply Fight tries to, you know, help and make it uh, as easy as possible. And so we auto attach an Excel file that includes all of those columns that we talked about in those previous slides, like the PO numbers, the vendor number, the item numbers, you know, MABD, all that kind of information. Um, and I actually downloaded one earlier, and this is essentially what it looks like. I know this is Excel, so I apologize for presenting an Excel file on a webinar, but uh, if you zoom in, you can see kind of, you know, these various columns that we're including um, all the sort of requested columns that they're asking for. We're including those. We are also adding kind of what we call supporting documentation for the dispute. So we're including a dispute reason um, that we autofill. We also include in this case uh, the DSS received quantity. So um, if, if, the, if the cases were marked as received in DSS, we also attach that. Um, we can also integrate with shipping documents. And so if you have your shipping document integration set up with OTIF radar, then we can auto attach those shipping documents inside the file so that they can look at those as well. And then lastly, we include kind of disputed cases and amount requested to be paid back. Um, and so this format generally, you know, ensures that they are going to review your uh, dispute at least. They're not going to, what we're trying to do is make sure that they don't deny you based on missing data or bad format. And so we've, you know, definitely uh, reviewed a lot of disputes, seen a lot of rejections early on for, you know, bad format or missing data. Um, and that's the goal here is to include all the required data and then any any data that kind of backs up why we believe this uh, this outcome is invalid. So that is what we auto generate and attach. You do not have to use it if you don't want. You can simply uncheck this file and uh, you can upload your own documents. Uh, to add to this or to replace this file, um, however you like, you can dispute here. Um, but again, we, we pre-fill the dispute amount, the dispute reason, give you a default uh, reason to dispute and generate this file. So if you want to go with the defaults, then all you have to do is kind of review this information and click on Submit Dispute. And that will submit this dispute to High Radius in the background. Um, and that's all you have to do to submit. Um, so I'll pause there if there's any questions to this point on the dispute process. Yeah, we do have one question on this dis uh, dispute process, Ryan. Um, is there a time frame that High Radius typically responds to these disputes? Um, do you have any, on, any thoughts on that part of the process? Yeah, that's a good question. We've seen this change a little bit over time over these last six months. Um, for a while, they were really averaging about two weeks response time from dispute to resolution. Um, lately, we've seen them go a bit beyond that. Uh, maybe it's because they're getting more disputes and it's taking them longer to, uh, to get through those. But overall, it still seems like it's less than a month uh, to this point. Sometimes, of course, there's exceptions and they, they come back quicker um, or a little bit slower. But generally, I think a month or less is, is pretty commonly what we're seeing on response time. All right. Thanks for that, Ryan. Um, one other question that's come through kind of back to the dashboard. Um, is there any rhyme or reason why there's sometimes a large difference between the expected fines and then the actual fines? Yeah, uh, definitely can speak to that. So 
Um, let's look at the month of September here. Um, so you here you can see kind of a projected fine for September, and this is not going to be, you know, actually come out. The fine's not going to come out till late October. Um, so one one reason is that because every weekend when Walmart posts new OTIF data, you know, they'll publish a new week of OTIF data one to two weeks in the past, they'll publish that. Um, so of course, like in this case for September, in this environment, I've only got four weeks of September filled out. So obviously if we get the fifth week, then September score and expected fine, you know, definitely will probably change from that uh, last week of September. But let's go beyond that and say the next weekend, they would publish the first week of October performance data. And the thing that happens is, is when they publish a new week's worth of OTIF data, they state, and they do this often, they will also go back to the prior few weeks and potentially modify the PO data in these past few weeks. Um, so that is one scenario that absolutely happens a lot. So whenever Supply Pike is showing you a projected fine, it's always based on the current data, the, the latest data for that month uh, that we have. And if the coming weekend they modify, they publish a new week and they also modify the prior weeks of that month, we'll catch all those changes and we'll update our expected fine to the new kind of reality. Um, and so it'll update. And it is definitely one of the most challenging things about you know monitoring projected fines because they're always kind of moving the, the, the data like that. Um, even after they publish it, it's not guaranteed to stay that way. It can change. Um, and sometimes for the better, of course, which is good uh, that your scores improve and the fines go down. That's probably the most common scenario, especially within full, because if you think that, you know, Walmart has all these trailers sitting in there at their DCs, uh, they're still waiting to be unloaded product is sitting at center point. Um, sometimes product is late to be delivered. And basically, as all those cases are finally getting received uh, at and sometimes weeks after the PO is due, then they're going back and updating those POs to say we've now received those goods. So your score may go up and your fine may go down. And that's that. So that kind of scenario is probably the most common cause of you know, changes from whatever today's projection is to what tomorrow's projection is to what the fine actually ends up as because it's just always getting updated up until right up until the last minute of them actually publishing the fine where they make and apply all the last changes and then they publish it um, at that time. So fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ryan. And uh, one more question on that to kind of clarify, when are the numbers final? Um, so the OTIF data on supply pipe, when does it get updated to the final approved data? And if um, if they wanted to compare the final versus the estimated charges, is there a way to do that in supply pipe? So for the first question, um, the final really becomes when Walmart publishes the invoice because that's kind of, you know, the final or the rubber meets the road. They actually issue their fine. Um, after that, after they issue the fine for the month, they're not going to change any PO data for that month. They're not going to, you know, no POs are going to change at that point when they issue that fine. So for example, I've got September selected, which has not yet been invoiced. And one way you can quickly look is we've kind of got this estimated September invoice period here. So this is based on Walmart's published uh, estimates for when fines are going to come out. Um, and we can see for September, it's going to be issued around October 26th. And Walmart's pretty good about being within a couple of days of this projected date and a lot of times on that very date. Um, so that's when things become final. As soon as Walmart posts that in the OTIF invoices for that month, 
Supply Pike is also catching that and updating your data to project that final outcome of your performance and fines for that month. So um, Supply Pike should be updating that the same day that Walmart issues those invoices. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps clarify the first part of that question. Um, the second question of comparing expected to actual fines, at the moment, it's not necessarily easy to do that uh, with our app. Um, the, obviously, one thing you could do is, of course, uh, export various reports. Um, so I could, you know, take a, a export of this dashboard for September when it's projected. Um, and then have that snapshot uh, ready to relate to what it looks like when the fine is posted. Um, so that's one way to do it and definitely open to feedback if that's something that would be helpful to you all. I'd love to, you know, hear um, kind of what you're looking for and we could explore uh, showing that in the app to you. So that's that's good feedback. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. That's all the questions for now. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So um, I know we covered a few different topics around that dispute process. So I do kind of want to go through it one more time and just make sure it's clear. So um, again, what my recommended workflow, if you're starting from the dashboard, all you have to do is click on an invalid fine amount. We'll take you to the purchase orders that are invalid. Um, then you can simply just check that top left box to check all of the POs um, and dispute them. So we've just got the invalid POs selected, check them all, click dispute, you know, review the dispute and make any modifications you want and submit it. And that's all you have to do. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's clear enough. And it, of course, if there's any questions uh, we can answer, then please let us know. Um, I do want to say one additional workflow that you might find useful is that you don't have to rely on Supply Pike's invalid fine identification to dispute only that section of POs. If you have your own reasons to dispute other POs that Supply Pike has not identified, uh, then we are uh, actually in progress on a change to allow you to dispute any PO where you received a fine. Um, so what I would do if I wanted to dispute, say, all of July's not in full POs, um, number one, I would clear any filters that were set. So that was that invalid filter. Um, so now I've cleared that. So this is all 149 POs where I received a in full charge here. You can check all of these POs if you really want to check them all, or you could come through and kind of cherry pick. There's lots of columns in here. So if maybe you were looking at uh, a specific PO type, maybe manual POs, for example, that you wanted to dispute, you could kind of sort based on that, select the POs that you want to dispute. And once you've done that, once you've selected your POs, you click on dispute POs. And in this case, um, we cannot supply the dispute reason because you've selected some POs that you know we didn't find a reason to be invalid. So here, we're, what we're asking you to do is supply your own kind of custom dispute reason uh, for these POs. And um, you can apply that to all the POs you have selected or just the POs that uh, do not have an invalid fine uh, reason that Supply Pike identified. So either all or just the ones where Supply Pike couldn't find as invalid. Um, so that's all we ask you to do extra. So you supply your own custom dispute reason. Um, and then you get this same screen where you can review your dispute. You can, you know, customize this comment. We'll still generate the Excel file with all those requested columns that High Radius wants. Um, and of course, you can customize it. Um, and on that Excel file, we'll actually plug in your dispute reason for those POs you selected. So this file will be updated as well to include the dispute reason you selected. 
um, so that we have all those kind of data points in here. Um, and then you would click on submit. So just want to mention that I, I know from talking to different suppliers, you know, identifying invalid charges is kind of tough. Uh, so I definitely recommend, you know, at least going after supply bikes, invalid fines that we've identified for you. And then if you have reason to dispute others, you can do it with this kind of workflow. So, um, so now we've talked about kind of submitting disputes. Um, the last thing that you probably want to do is then track disputes that have been submitted. And so there is this new kind of disputes tab at the top. And here is where you can see the disputes that have been submitted. Um, you have kind of overall metrics here of showing how much have I disputed in total, how much is pending with high radius, how much has been approved and your win rate. Um, so you have some high level stats there to see sort of what's happened across the board. And then you have all of these individual disputes where you can see, you know, what month, uh, how much did I dispute, what metric did I go after, you know, how many POs were in this dispute, and of course the status of that dispute. So um, we update this information every night. So, you know, once you submit this dispute, we'll submit it pretty much immediately. And then we'll check for any update uh, every night and post that back into Supply Pike so you can see kind of the latest status. You don't have to, you know, check, you don't have to go out to high radius to check that. Um, and from here, you can also do things like drill into specific uh, disputes. So um, you can click on a dispute and pull up information that was included. So you can see kind of, you know, what description did I give this dispute? Um, you know, when was it disputed? Uh, and then this dispute resolution area shows any feedback from High Radius that was posted um, after they reviewed your dispute. So usually this is an approval or a denial scenario. And so if it's an approval, then this is kind of the information that you'll see back. Uh, they'll let you know how much they're paying back um, and, you know, for this invoice that was disputed. Um, so that's that's what you'll get back uh, on an approval. And then on rejected ones, you'll get back different information. Sometimes the rejections like this one is, you know, this was an in full dispute and they ran, they sampled some of the POs that were included in the in full dispute. They didn't find any discrepancy. Um, and so they denied it, but they'll give you other information kind of about, you know, disputing and such. So you can review that to see, you know, hopefully if there's relevant details to the rejection as to why they rejected it. Um, and some, if there's a formatting issue, like they're looking for certain data that wasn't included, that's obviously a helpful data point. And then we could you know, you can certainly pass that to Supply Bike so we can make those changes to make sure that data is included. Um, but you also can manually, of course, modify, say, that Excel file to attach it real quick if, if you need to and want to. So, um, yeah, hopefully this gives you a, a quick glimpse into that detailed dispute. You can also see, you know, the original file that was disputed as well. So any files that were attached to this dispute will show up here. Um, yeah, along with that total disputed amount, approved amount, et cetera. Um, so I think that covers kind of, you know, tracking your disputes. Again, uh, we'll update this information nightly. One thing I do want to state um, is that we've been looking at everything on the Walmart store side of OTIF, um, but everything that I went over today is available on the e-commerce side as well. So everything in regards to disputing, to how you dispute, to what information you include, it's all the same on e-commerce. So, um, you know, to change over and dispute e-com charges, you would just select e-commerce data and go through the exact same processes and pages to review that information. So. Um, you can dispute both stores and e-commerce through high radius and through supply bike uh, with these same 
same processes and workflows. So um, I do have a couple questions that we can go through, Ryan. Yeah. Um, so the first one, um, the first customer is saying that they do not have the dispute tab on their OTIF radar. Is there a way to get that or do they need to add the high radius um, integration to do that? Uh, so I think the first step might be reaching out to their account manager, uh, Krista, just to check to see if they've got proper access um, and they can help sort of turn that on. There is a process, like you said, Krista, of we do have to kind of connect to your high radius uh, portal so that we can correctly and, you know, pull those disputes and submit them to high radius in the background. Um, so there's a bit of a process with that connection, and I would just recommend, yeah, reaching out to your account manager or customer success manager to help uh, sort of turn this, this functionality on. Yeah, sounds good. And then um, last question I have right now, um, does the expected fine, so the expected OTIF fine typically come in, <clears throat> excuse me, before the shortage deduction comes in or do they come in simultaneously or after the fact? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, the timing of the OTIF charge is, so for example, we were looking at September early, earlier. Um, so September is projected to come out around October 26th. So. The month of September for Walmart OTIF means the dates. You can kind of see it here as I hover over. So any POs that were due between August 20th and September 23rd. Um, and so all the fines for POs that were due in this time period will be issued on October 28th or October 26th. So it's like four to eight weeks after the PO is due as to when that OTIF charge is going to hit. Um, so that's the timing on the OTIF side. With deductions, it kind of depends on when Walmart is paying uh, your invoices. Um, so, and I'm unfortunately not as much of an expert on the Walmart uh, payable side, but I know there's typically payment terms where after you bill Walmart, they're expected to pay you within a certain time period. Um, and so whatever, it's the deduction is gonna come across as soon as they pay that invoice. So if you're billing Walmart at the time you ship um, and they're paying you, you know, X days after that invoice is received, then that's kind of when you would expect to see that deduction come across. So I think overall, sort of long story short here, I think you're probably more likely to see the deduction come across first before the OTIF charge is issued. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the timing that I would expect. And again, just to reiterate, you know, unfortunately, even if you say disputed that shortage deduction and you won that dispute, that's still not going to come across onto the OTIF side. It's not like that's gonna wipe out the OTIF charge even though you did prove that you shipped in full, there's just two separate sides of Walmart's house where they're not gonna update the OTIF charge based on that shortage dispute. So anyways, just wanna make that point one more time, but uh, yeah, hopefully that timing kind of helps a little bit. Yeah, that does. Um, another question, Ryan, do the late routing charges go by 3% of goods for o OTIF or is it different? Yeah, so all the OTIF charges, including late routing, not in full, prepaid late deliveries, all those things um, are 3% of the cost of goods sold that were non-compliant. So, you know, if you delivered if you routed an entire PO late and there was a, you know, hundred cases, if, if Walmart's, you know, what take whatever Walmart was going to pay you for that purchase order that was late routed and take 3% of that. And that's what that fine would be. And that would apply to, you know, a prepaid late delivery if you're prepaid. And if you're not in full, maybe you delivered 80 cases and not delivered 20 and take 3% of what they were going to pay you for those 20 cases 
and that's what that OTIF not in full fine would be. So yeah, that's how that's calculated. Okay, thanks. That's all the questions for now. Again, if you do have other questions or questions on this or just any um, general questions about OTIF radar, go ahead and type them into the Q&A box. Awesome. Yeah, and I know we're here in the last 10 minutes or so. We got a few minutes. I'll just share one other um, one other kind of thing to consider when you are disputing uh, these OTIF charges. Um, we have, a, especially on the in full side, that's a metric where we see a lot more kind of invalid fines. Um, and so, and of course, whether you're prepaid or collect, you're responsible for kind of that fill rate scenario. Um, so there's actually two ways that you can identify potentially invalid in full fines. So everything we talked about earlier was based on the comparing your ASN shipped amount to what Walmart says they received. And you can kind of see this example here, you know, on this PO, 49 cases were shipped according to the ASN. Walmart says they only received 48. So that's what this filter, uh, I'll zoom that back out here. That's what this ASN discrepancies filter looks for is differences in that ASN shipped amount and OTIF cases received. So that's one invalid scenario you can dispute. You can just click this filter at any time, apply it, and that's that uh, shipped not in full scenario. There's another filter we have for in full that potentially represents invalid charges, and that is based on discrepancies between the OTIF cases received and the DSS cases received. And if you don't know DSS, is sort of Walmart's reporting app. That's where you can go to run all kinds of reports. One of those reports is just to look at, you know, receiving data on POs. Um, so I know it's kind of odd, uh, but sometimes, surprisingly, the OTIF data will show a different number of received cases than what DSS reports as received. And so this is another scenario uh, that we identify that you can basically use this DSS discrepancies filter will automatically update the PO list to those where there's a difference between that OTIF cases received and what DSS is showing you as received. And so you can also dispute this scenario. And this is basically this scenario is saying, look, Walmart, these your own app is showing that these cases were received over in DSS, but yet we're still getting OTIF charges on them. So this, uh, you know, lately we've been uh, suggesting this particular filter a little bit more because we've seen a little bit higher dispute success when you dispute with the DSS discrepancies. Um, and it's, you know, if you think about it, it's maybe a little bit easier case to make, like Walmart, your own data is showing this, this PO was received, um, yet we're getting these charges. So it's potentially a little bit more powerful data point to use in the dispute. So if you want to give that a shot, um, all you have to do is kind of apply this uh, DSS discrepancies uh, filter and we'll auto you know, automatically filter down the PO list to where this discrepancy exists between these two data points. And if you were to dispute, it's just the same way. Select all the POs, click dispute POs. Um, we'll actually, again, fill in the dispute scenario, um, fill out that Excel file. And you just have to review and submit. Um, so, I know we're running up on time, but I just wanted to offer that one more tidbit that lately we've been seeing a little bit more success with the DSS discrepancies. It tends to be a smaller amount than ASN shipping discrepancies, but you know if you have more dispute success with it, then it may be worth it. So something to consider. Um, but yeah, just want to pause now because I know we're running up on time. So yeah, thanks, Ryan. We do have another question. Um, so can you reiterate what the data points are that must be included if um, they do a manual dispute? 
So yeah, it's and it's I think you can find this when we share the slide deck after this uh, this uh, webinar is done with, um, and we send out that recording. But in this slide deck, you'll see all of these columns, um, and many of these are in the retail link OTIF scorecard app, and um, and also can be found in OTIF radar as well. So if you just download the files from OTIF radar. You should be able to get most of these columns. There are a few that High Radius seem to just invent uh, and request. So things like charge type um, doesn't really exist in the OTIF scorecard data. So you might have to manually fill that out. Um, but most of everything else should be in your OTIF radar data. Um, and yeah, that these are the columns that we've seen them request. This does not, of course, include any dispute proof. So if you have backup documentation for why the charges should be, you know, reversed, this is not, that's not in these columns. Um, but of course, you could manually add those in. So yeah, I would say refer to the slide deck in general, and that should have pretty much at least the basics of what to attach. Yeah, great. And just as a reminder, we will be sending out the slide deck by email. Um, it typically takes us about three to four days to get the video and the slide deck all packaged together for you all, but you'll be receiving that within the next uh, three to four days. So I know we're coming up on time here. Ryan and I will hang out. Um, if anybody has any additional questions in the next two minutes, you're welcome to post those and we'll hang on to answer those. Um, otherwise, feel free to email us um, any questions that you have as well. You can see our email addresses here on the screen. Um, or another really easy way to get help from the Supply Pipe team is to use our in-app chat tool. So that will be in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. You'll see just a blue bubble there um, in the right-hand bottom corner. Um, you can click on that to send our support team a message anytime. And um, we are uh, super fast at responding to you and, and getting you help. Um, and then also um, you can reach out to your customer success manager anytime as well. So thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll hang on here for a couple more minutes, but um, appreciate you joining and have a good day. Mm -hmm.